guys today I got a project with the Subaru WRX and replace the intercooler hoses so I bought this kit it's a silicone hose kit it's a Mishimoto brand it says they have a lifetime warranty on them so what you get in the box get three hoses and the clamps. I'm going to open these up so you can take a look at them. I don't remember what I paid for these. I bought them last year sometime. I think they were, they were definitely less than $100 though. Somewhere between $50 and 100 probably. So I bought the black one. A little more stealth. This is the hose for your blow-off valve. This connects to the throttle body. And this is goes to the intercooler. So <clears throat> the reason you want a silicone hose kit like this, if you're going to be running a little more higher pressure on your turbo, you can. Uh, these will handle the higher pressures. And probably your old hoses are pretty shot by now if you have an older car like mine. Mine's a 2002. So it doesn't hurt to replace them anymore. And it looks like they give you some pretty good clamps with them. Package of clamps here. Throttle body. A couple small ones. Well, there's like three of them for the uh, intercooler connections. Okay, to get your intercooler off, 2002 through 2005 WRX, you need a 12 millimeter socket to remove the intercooler bolts. It has these little ears on either side. And also for the Blow off valve here. Those are 12 millimeter. <clears throat> and then there's three 10 millimeter bolts that hold these pipes on. Not sure exactly what these pipes do. But so we'll take out these two. Three 10 millimeters. Disconnect your blow off valve. Two bolts. You may want to buy a gasket ahead of time for that. Then you're going to need to loosen the clamps on your throttle body. So just loosen them where it connects to the air cooler. And then there's also another clamp down here where it comes off the turbo. Right here. Take that clamp off and then your cooler is just going to lift right out of there. Like so. And that's what it looks like without the inner cooler. See your transmission. Get your starter down there. Turbo. And so, back of the inner cooler. This is what we're going to be replacing this hose right here. Looks like a little grease on the outside, nothing on the inside. I'd be worried if there was a little oil inside there. Looks like some, oh, maybe someone put the hose back on. They, they lubed that hose up really good to slip it on. So, <clears throat> and then you've got your off valve hose, which is right down here. I'm gonna get a light right here. Goes up to the blow off valve. That hose right there, the big one. Goes into the intake tube. So here's your air filter box. Travels down. You got your mass airflow sensor there. 
travels down and connects to the inlet side of the turbo right there. And the blow off valve goes into that this tube right here. So you have to get a clamp off right down there. This one right here. And these silicone hoses are much easier to work with than the factory hard plastic stuff. This this is really rigid. It's a little flex joint in it, but uh, very rigid compared to these silicone hoses. Okay, so here's a comparison between the two intercooler hoses. See the silicone hoses are quite a bit thicker. It's going to flow a little bit more air. Yeah, this blow-off hose is going to give me a hard time. It's uh, pretty well dried out. It's stuck on the blow-off valve. And then, down here on the other end, where it connects up to the intake tube, the clamp is facing the wrong way. So, I can't really reach this with a plier, so what I'm going to try to do is, uh, once I get this end off, I'm going to try and twist the hose, see if I can get that clamp near the top where I can grab it and loosen it up. So one way to get a dried out hose off is you can usually cut it. Okay, so that was plan B. I had to cut that clamp with a Dremel tool. I wasn't able to twist the hose enough to bring the clamp to the top. Well, one thing I'm not too happy with so far is the size clamps they give you for the blow-off hose. Where it connects to the blow-off valve. You can see how it's distorting that hose. I think, well, I ended up using the factory spring clamp on this end of the blow-off hose because the clamp they supplied is too small. You're ready and install your intercooler now. Uh, you want to connect the hose onto your turbo first. And when you install it on the throttle body, this hose, you feel like your <coughs> uh, logo showing. Make sure that's going in the right direction. Well, here's another clamp that I don't like to fit. This clamp is supposed to go on the uh, turbo end of the intercooler hose. And uh, it's a little bit too big.
Okay, so I end up using mostly the factory clamps. I just wasn't happy with what the way the uh, supply clamps were fitting. Some were a little big and some were a little small. So there it is, I got it all installed. Next I'm gonna run a data log with my B3 access port. I ran a data log before I installed these hoses to see what kind of boost I was getting. And I'm gonna run another one afterwards and see if my boost is any better. I'm gonna run the same exact uh, location I'm gonna do the test at. And then I'll, I'll post the results. Hey guys, here's a couple data logs where I can compare the boost before and after installing those silicone hoses. So we'll click on this stock hoses, first run. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna freeze all this. This top that up here will freeze. You click here and then go to window. Good freeze. And that freezes that data, the top line. So I'm gonna go down to where the throttle position is at 100%. at the boost numbers. Here's the target boost and then we got the actual boost next to it. So looks like we're getting about 13 and a half pounds of boost. It's calling for almost 17 and a half pounds of boost. So I'm under boosting even with a high wastegate. Look at that second data log real quick here. Stock data log. Stock hoses. And it's the same, pretty close. I'm getting less than 13 and a half, 13 and a quarter about. Okay, let's look at the boost numbers with the silicone hoses installed. Go over here to 100% throttle, find my spot. <clears throat> and getting about almost 14 pounds of boost in here. Thirteen point eight, thirteen nine eight, right up near 14. I got 14 in one spot in there. Alright, so that's like an extra half a pound of boost. And so I wasn't sure if I had some leaks, that's why my boost was so low compared to what it's calling for. I'm thinking now I have a, uh, it's a uh, pipe is restricted or I need to uh, change my cat back. I have a aftermarket downpipe, but I have the stock cat back exhaust on it because I like it kind of quiet. So I may change that, but first I'm going to change the outpipe and see if I can hit my uh, boost numbers. So here's the second run with the uh, silicone hoses. Yeah, I was thinking I was definitely getting a, had some boost leaks, but it looks like it's probably exhaust restriction. So here, here's the boost, and it's getting 14, again, just a tad bit over 14, and it's calling for around 17 and a half. So the up next project is going to be out pipe. 